Okay, so we just did this SN1 reaction. Let's draw the energy diagram for it. So here all. So notice the rate is this the rate determining step is this first step, right? So we want to keep that in mind. So here, let's just write rate determining step for right there. And um, I am just going to erase most of this. Okay, you're going to have to remember that it's the rate determining step. Okay, so we're starting with this um, secondary alkyl halide, and we want to draw the reaction coordinate. So, on this um, axis, what's going to be, what's this axis? Your energy. Oftentimes we write it as what? G. Delta G. Right. And here, what's here? Rate of reaction. Yeah. Reaction progress. And then <clears throat> since you guys asked me, and we didn't we've done one of these before, so I want you guys to help, okay? So What's going to be on this side of the react uh, the reaction coordinate, and what's going to be on this side? Reactants react and right. products. Okay. So reactants are going to be up there. Products are going to be down there. So so when delta G is negative, then reactants will be at the bottom. The, when delta G is negative, the yeah. products will be at the bottom. Products will be below the reactants if delta G is negative, right? So look. Let's just do that right now. So, delta G started here and ended here. So did it become more positive or more negative? More positive. So if you start with $100 and you end up with $3, what happened to your dollars? Lost money. So that's more negative, negative right? So let's put things into terms that we can understand it helps out. So delta G in this case is what? Negative. Negative. Okay. Okay, so how many steps does this SN1 reaction have if you go back and look at um, your notes? From two. two, right? So how many <coughs> hills are we going to have? Two. two. And the first one or the second one is going to be bigger? First, first, one. first one. Why is that? The rate determinant step. Kind of ugly, but whatever. Okay, so um, let's label some portions of this uh, graph. So, um, what's up here? Transition state. Yeah, the transition state. What do we, this one is transition state one, right? Okay, and um, what do we call the energy difference from here to here? Activation energy. The activation energy. Is the activation energy positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Okay, so oftentimes this will be like delta G double dagger or E. Whichever one you prefer is fine. Um, what about here? What's this going to be called? Transition state two. Transition state two. Yeah. Okay. And what about the energy from here to here? Delta G, double energy. Uh huh. So that's the what? Activation. Activation energy going from the this thing, which is the what? Intermediate. Intermediate. From the inter 
intermediate to that transition state. So in these transition states, are these actual like molecules or particles? No. Uh uh. So they're just transient states, okay? So it's where your slope goes from your from positive to negative at that zero point you get your um, transition states. These intermediates, are these actual things? Yes. Yes, okay. They're high energy, of course, very reactive, but potentially iso isolable, okay? Um, in SN1 reactions, what is the identity of the intermediate? Carbocation. It's a carbocation, okay? So let's just say the intermediate, we got a carbocation in SN1 reaction. Um, so is this re reaction going to be um, endergonic or exergonic? Exergonic. exergonic? exergonic, right? Why is that? Because delta G is negative. Right? Anything else you want to ask about this thing? I don't have a question about that in particular, but I'm wondering since uh, tertiary alkyl halides can form either SN1 or SN2. A secondary can. A secondary. Uh -huh. Unless the tertiary did that mean secondary. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, if you have a reaction, how will we be able to identify between the two? Will you just have like an acid and a base? Well, that's a good question. Uh, does anybody know how you would identify it if the secondary would go um, SN1 or SN2? The weaker strong. Yeah, nucleophile. nucleophile, right? So oftentimes we talk about the weak nucleophile in the SN1 reaction just being the solvent. Mm -hmm. So if you only see the solvent in the reaction, um, then it's probably going SN1. Okay. Um, if you have a strong nucleophile, in a non-polar solvent, okay, it's going to go SN2. Any other questions? We could kill it? Okay. Good job, guys.